Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence is a man that's going to be fighting for the Victory FC heavyweight title coming up next week as he's going to take on Daniel Gallimore is Derek Bohai. Derek, how's it going? Uh, it's going very well. Appreciate you taking some time out. Uh, as I, I, I looked at uh, your resume and his resume, noticed that you guys have fought uh, on, on some same fight cards, particularly fighting for Bellator. Did you did you ever share a locker room with him? And, and at that point, did you kind of think of, at some point, the two of your past would cross? Uh, yeah, I've, I've known Dan for a long time. Uh, being in the Midwest and being heavyweights, uh, we, were, you know, we were some of the top amateurs around. Never got a fight set up. Um, once we kind of went pro, it's kind of like, you know, we're always kind of circling around. You know, we see each other fight, say hi, you know, how's it going? I was training this, that, and the other. And it was like we weren't, it was like we weren't moving to become training partners, but we kind of thought, you know, hey, some point we're probably going to fight. So, and, and of course, it's coming, uh, coming up oh, here. Ahead, Coming up here at, at Victory FC 55, you, you enter this fight with back-to-back wins, uh, you know, following that loss there at uh, Bellator 139. How, how do you assess your performance uh, in your last two fights? Uh, I think, uh, I'm, you know, I've trained really hard, and I don't know about the last, I mean, it's cliche, everybody's like, oh, I had the best fight camp ever. I trained really hard. Uh, for me, I think it was uh, getting mean and, like, becoming, you know, trying to fight nasty and, and actually be aggressive. I've always you know, kind of fought kind of passively. I'm a pretty, you know, nice guy. And just the last couple of years, uh, both in my Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappling and in my MMA, I've just kind of found an inner mean streak where I'm just a lot more aggressive. And it's uh, it's helped paid off. One, I train a lot harder. And I, you know, everything I throw in a fight, I throw with a lot more intent. And I just go at it with a, with a, with a purpose now. And I think that's probably the biggest evolution of my game the last couple of years. Is there anything you can point to of why all of a sudden you became this this mean and nasty guy on, on competition day? Um, honestly, I think it was uh, I got an opportunity to to run a gym um, once after I got my brown belt. My coach got a job and he moved overseas, and I was able to step into his shoes, uh, run my own program, and it basically became my career. Uh, I get up in the morning, I do my workout, I come to the gym, I teach uh, my classes, I, I, I've got a couple fighters I train, I teach got a pretty large and growing uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu team, and, you know, fighting and training basically became my career, and I think that was the biggest thing, I was like, I'm doing all this work, I've got to do it right, and I can't just go through the motions, I've really got to, I've just got to move with a purpose in everything I do. In terms of uh, training for uh, MMA competition and, and, a, and, a, and a BJJ competition, obviously differences of you know throwing punches and kicks and, and right. other things. But how, how? What are some other? Are, are there some characteristics between the two trainings that? And what are the differences? Um, there's a lot of runs along, uh, a lot of similarities. Um, again, you mentioned the striking. The striking is the biggest thing. Um, you know, I'm getting ready for MMA fights. You know, I've got to start working the heavy bag a lot more. Uh, working on technique a lot more. Uh, when I was a younger fighter, I was all about, you know, sparring and, you know, shadow boxing and did, I didn't really work a lot on technique. I just, you know, Hey man, let's throw down. And as I've kind of gotten older, you know, I, I train a lot more on technique, uh, cut my sparring back a little bit. Uh, we still go hard, but we don't go near hard as near as often. Um, you know, the conditioning aspects are pretty much the same. I train, uh, I train for, you know, for the large grappling, you know, worlds, Pan Ams, other big IBJJF competitions. I train for those. The, the conditioning is a lot like my MMA conditioning. It's a, you know a lot of strength, a lot of conditioning. You know, got to have a gas tank to be able to move big guys. Uh, I'm a big guy. Uh, one of the biggest thing, the biggest difference actually, is probably my diet and nutrition because there's no weight limit in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, you know, I showed up at two years ago. I won Worlds. I think I weighed 295, and I I, I won Master Senior Worlds in Las Vegas at Brown Belt and I'm at the top of the podium but I am not the biggest guy in the bracket. I was I was the smallest guy on the podium. Everybody else was mm-hmm. had at least 40 50 pounds on me. Uh MMA I fight at heavyweight so I make 265 and you know I I try to be the bigger stronger guy but in grappling uh, a lot of times I'm I'm often not so I got to kind of adjust my training accordingly. In terms of your sparring, as you have developed as a fighter, would you say that your sparring sessions are, are more 
uh, of a technical sparring session where it's not necessarily going out there and throwing all the heat. It's just about kind of going through the work of of knowing how you're going to throw a punch. Right. It's uh, it, it's definitely a lot more technical now, but it's it's a lot. Uh, you know, think technical. Uh, probably precision sparring is is the biggest thing. Um, used to, I was you know relatively experienced training with some other guys that were you know around the same level. It was just, hey, we're going to throw down and it's a fight, and we're going to see who's who's left standing here. And, and it's when you're sparring like that, and you basically you're fighting, and it kind of sucks because it's like, oh man, I don't want to go to sparring today. I'm kind of dreading it. I don't want to get hit. This is you know, it's kind of there's like a mental game going on. Um, being more technical now i can still get the work in without actually having to have a knockdown drag out fight three days a week so uh i definitely yeah i i, I oh, everything i've read i think a lot of fighters are going to that more uh, technical mm-hmm. precise mindset just based on the fact that you don't get paid to train you get paid to show up and fight and if you're having your best rounds in the gym getting beat up and beating people up when nobody's around to see it yeah. um you're you know you're wasting those rounds I definitely have noticed, and I've talked to a lot of fighters who have talked about that. As you know, you don't, you don't want to get yourself too beat up. Uh, I got to ask about the nickname Marshmallow. How did you get it? <laughs> uh, basically, it goes back to my grappling. Uh, when I, I, oh gosh, back in like 2010, I'd, uh, I was like, had lost my job, I was going through a career change, and I was kind of getting bored with fighting. And I, 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 I started going to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. A friend of mine. Said, hey, there's this, you know, this Brazilian guy down here in Olathe, Kansas. You should go train with him. He's really good. He's like the best guy around. And I, I dug my gi out of the, you know, darkest corner of my closet, and I had a big white gi. And, and kind of in my mind, I was like, you know, I'm a good fighter. I'm awesome at grappling. I'll probably just go in and get like a, a purple or brown belt because I, I had no idea what about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu really, what it really was. Uh, but I started training with this Brazilian guy uh, named Leonardo Fasania, and he didn't speak a whole lot of English, and for the first like three months I trained with him, I was "Hey you fat guy." So that was <laughs> that was me. He, he was, "Hey you fat guy." I was about I was probably about two ninety, three hundred pounds walking around then, and I was just "You fat guy." And then one day we come to class, and he's uh, talking to the other uh, Brazilian guy there, and all they all they spoke was Portuguese. They show a move, and then you'd never hear English ever except the guy you were training with. Um, but they were laughing. And they were pointing and laughing at me, and I'm like, you know, I don't speak Portuguese, but I know when people are laughing at me, and I'm like, I can't fight this guy because he'll kick my ass. But uh, if I gotta go get a bat or something, I don't know what's going on. But why are they laughing at me? And then the other guy explained, he's like, oh, he said, asked if you've seen the movie Ghostbusters because the marshmallow and the the big white marshmallow, that's what you look like. And from that point on, I was marshmallow. So it was uh, it was an upgrade from you fat guy, but. You know, I kind of had to embrace it because you don't get to pick your nickname. So that's true. I've also I've seen the gym name is the Broken Smile Fight Team. Is this something you oh, came yeah. up with? <laughs> no, that's. Uh, I used to have a gym at my house. I had a I had a barn in my backyard, and basically, when I got into MMA, uh, I just come back from Iraq, and a friend of mine had done some amateur fights, and I had watched one amateur show, and I was like. I'm a Marine. I'm tough. I can fight. I want to do this, you know, kind of just as a, as a bucket list kind of thing. And we went to the show and it was out in, oh, I want to say Moberly, Missouri. And there was all these teams. It was like death kill, MMA, death <laughs> murder fight club. And there's all these super, just crazy, ridiculously hardcore names. And I'm, and everybody's like walking around mean mugging people. And me and my friends were kind of like, these guys take this shit way too seriously. And, for my second fight, we decided, oh, well, you know, we we need a gym name. So a friend of mine was like, uh, how about Broken Smile Fight Team? And we're like, yeah, okay. We all kind of talked about it. And we were all like, yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. And we printed up some shirts with some smiley faces on it. And uh, that was that that became our gym name. So it was, uh, you know, kind of we, we we trained. We trained really hard. We fought really hard. But at the end of it, you know, all of us at the time were pretty much uh, Marine Corps veterans. So it was like, we've been to war, we've seen combat, we're here to like, you know, this is what we do for fun, there's no need to take this seriously. So we kind of went into it with that kind of, uh, a lighter mindset, so to speak, and uh, that's that's just how we came came to be. 
So it wasn't until after your service in the Marines that you got involved in, in martial arts? Right. Well, one, uh, I was in Iraq in 2005, and one of the guys was there, and somehow or other he knew Tito Ortiz and had a, a like a, a UFC Greatest Hits DVD or something, and uh-huh. we, used to watch, we used to watch it on his laptop, and it was like, what the hell is that? Like, that's legal? That's great? Oh, my God, that's awesome. <laughs> so I, you know, I, miss, I missed the boat when... You know, I was I was growing up in Iowa. I missed all the UFC one and Hoist Gracie and all this stuff. I never saw that until years later after the fact. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just decided to do one. I managed to win. I won my amateur debut, and then I very quickly realized that I have no idea how to fight. I should probably start training somewhere. That, but this was fun, and I think I want to keep doing it. What was the point that you realized you loved uh, the the you know martial arts when it comes to BJJ and also MMA? Uh, it's probably around a 2010 time frame, uh, because it was kind of a hobby, something I'd done. And I think when I got into it, I think my first fight was probably 2007. And I was like, all right, well, I'll do this for three years and see where it goes and see what happens. And, and then I'll, you know, I'll be done with it. And it was like, it's at the time, it didn't seem to be something that like, you know, grown ups did so to speak. And I, I kind of got training. I started training, um, for my first like five fights, I just trained in my garage. I'd bought like a couple of yoga mats and my friends would come over and let me beat them up in my garage. And then I built my barn and then my friends stopped coming over. So I joined a gym, started training just MMA. I didn't want to do jujitsu. I thought that was stupid. I was like, Oh, it's these pajama grapplers. They think they're tough. They don't know anything. And it, I did that. I was in that cycle for a couple of years. And then I kind of started training gi jujitsu after I was getting tired of MMA. And once I started training the gi, I basically fell in love with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like became super dedicated to that. Um, you know, I like fighting, you know, fortunately uh, there's more money in fighting than there is in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu right now. But, uh, you know, my heart is actually in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, there's a guy named Joe Wilk and he actually does a commentary for victory, yeah. but he said, he said years ago, he says, you know, I'm not a fighter that does jujitsu. I'm a jitsu. I'm a jujitsu athlete that fights, or I'm a jujitsu guy that fights. And I was like, I never really understood what that meant. Probably until about two or three years ago, I was like, I spend all my time training grappling, and then I'm going to fight, and I'm just throwing haymakers and wait until somebody falls down. And I was like, I this this, this the skill set that I have, I need to start applying it. And then that actually kind of reignited a passion and in, in, for MMA because I was like, I want to show what grappling, what Brazilian jujitsu can do in the MMA world. So uh, it's kind of come, you know, started fighting, got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and then Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu got me fired up about fighting again. Do you prefer uh, training uh, in gi or no gi? Um, I do both. Um, you know, as far as preferences, you know, I, I just like to choke people and I like to heel hook people. So it doesn't really matter. You know, my, my comfort level does not uh, dic- is not dictated by what I'm wearing. Um, most of the classes I teach here are – uh, in the gi, uh, and that's mainly due to the fact that we have a young program. Um, and I think the more you train in the gi, the gi, the more technical you will become at a faster rate, uh, and then that will then make you a better no gi grappler. And the same is unfortunately not; it doesn't work both ways. If you train mostly no gi, as soon as you get in the gi, you know most of your game is going to be gone because you're relying upon friction and slipperiness and, and speed and power as opposed to proper technique and stuff. So we, I, you know. I teach, you know, I love no gi night when we have it, but I, you know, I'm training in the gi you know, probably 90% of the time. And of course, your fight coming up here next week at, at Victory FC 55, by the way, fans can watch this on UFCFightPass.com as Victory is a part of that network there. Uh, how, how do you get the win here against Daniel Gallimore? Uh, I feel confident um, I can win anywhere we need to go. I think my striking is probably more technical than his. Uh, he's you know he throws he throws big punches. Um, I think I've got a more diverse striking attack with uh, knees, elbows, and, and kicks. Uh, I think my wrestling is better. I, think my, I know you know, I know my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a lot better. Um, I just you know got to keep my hands up and stick to my game plan. Uh, but I definitely see a finish. Um, I don't have. Uh, I think I've only gone in the second round like twice. Um, I have a pretty never seen a third round as a pro i hope to never see a third round as a pro but if i need to fight five at this fight you know i still see my hand raised at the end 
And, of course, as I mentioned, everyone, everyone is, is, that's not in attendance can watch this event on UFCFightPass.com. Derek, I really appreciate the time, and good luck here at Victory FC 55. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you.